For most game developers, they'll start off creating a 2D platformer, a simple mobile game, or work on a specific game mechanic. But I've decided to pursue a different path. Personally, I want to be able to make a game that I would play myself. Now, I've dabbled in several game-related projects and engines, but I've never took on a project of this kind of scale. So against many people's advice, I'll be skipping the whole platformer phase, and today marks the first episode where I'll be embarking on a journey to create a somewhat playable multiplayer first-person shooter. I'll be starting entirely from scratch in Unreal Engine 5, and I'll use a combination of blueprints, C++, and whatever many assets I need to steal from the marketplace to complete this project. I don't care how long it takes, how many struggles I have to get through, how many bugs I encounter along the way. But eventually, at the end of this series, I'll have a somewhat playable multiplayer first-person shooter, and I'll gather a group of friends to playtest the game. So, let's get started. The first aspect of the game that I decided to work on was player movement and animations. I thought it would be a good idea to try and keep the first and third person animations the same to essentially create a true first person shooter. Mostly because I'm lazy and I didn't want to introduce separate animations, but in reality it probably ended up costing me more time. I created two separate instances of the player mesh, one only seen by the client without its head, and a second which is what's seen by other players. Which one is shown to an individual player is dictated in the begin play function which checks if the player is locally controlled. Now for the fun part. Because I wanted my game to have a strong focus on mobility and speed, I decided on adding sliding. The concept seems simple enough to implement. Find the vector that corresponds with the direction the player wants to slide to, which is usually the forward vector, then add a force in that direction. But what if the player is on a slope? Well, then just find the vector that points towards where the surface is sloping and add a force in that direction. Seems easy enough. To do this, I found the floor normal that the player is standing on, checked if the up vector differed from the floor normal, and in that case, that means the player is on a slope surface. Then got the cross product of the floor normal and the up vector. Then got the cross product of the floor normal and the resulting vector, which gave me the direction in which to push the player towards if they were on a slope. Easy peasy. Or was it? It turns out that not only was there issues with replication, but the slide distance was also being affected by varying frame rates. I tried multiplying everything by delta time, trying different built-in Unreal Engine methods of pushing the player forward, but eventually I gave up and I said, maybe game development just isn't for me. Just kidding. What ended up happening is I spent an entire night experimenting with different solutions until I finally came up with a genius solution that I thought of all by myself. No, in reality the issues were a few values in the character movement component, I just had to change those values, replicate them to the server while sliding, and revert the values back to normal when the character stopped sliding. And boom, sliding is complete. Now moving on to weapon handling. I decided to customize each weapon to have its own separate attributes, including weight, aim down sights time, recoil patterns, sound and muzzle flash effects, overheating attributes, and more. The current weapon models I'm using are placeholders in the meantime, but eventually I'll have my own models. Each weapon has its own aim, left hand, and muzzle sockets. I used a combination of C++ and blueprints to implement a procedural aim down sight system that lines up the aim socket to the center of the screen, uses the fabric IK node to position the left hand on the weapon, and handles weapon sway. Weapon firing is handled a little bit differently depending on if the player's aim down sights or not. If the player is aiming, a raycast is fired from the camera through the aim point socket to ensure that the raycast is aligned with wherever the sights are aimed at regardless of recoil. For the recoil animation, I use a procedural recoil system from the marketplace that I highly recommend and I'll leave a link to it in the description. When the player is firing from the hip, the raycast is firing from the camera straight forward and each weapon has its own weapon spread value. So, so far I've implemented these basic game mechanics along with a basic elimination game mode, a spawn system, and some other things. I'll keep developing the game and posting updates until it's in a state where it's somewhat playable. By far, the biggest difficulties I've encountered are dealing with replication and lag compensation in multiplayer. When making a multiplayer shooter, one of the most important things is responsiveness. Players want to feel in complete control at all times, but you can't trust the client with authority. So there's a lot of trickery that needs to be done in order to give the player the feeling and the illusion that they're in complete control, but in reality, the server is dictating everything. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode, where I'll have a 1v1 playtest and find a bunch of game-breaking bugs, and I'll show how I solve them. Alright, this should work.